As soon as I left school, I started my first business and within 12 months, I was a multimillionaire and living the dream. Retired on a beach in Bali, meditating all day. Not only does that statement sound ridiculous, but for 99.9% .9 of us, it is completely unreasonable, if not impossible. But the reality is most people out there are buying into this get rich quick narrative that is so attractive online. Why? Because against the difficulty of real life, it seems like the easy solution to your problems. If you want to get rich without putting in any work, then my recommendation to you would be to give this video a thumbs down, walk to the nearest shops and buy a lottery ticket because that is going to be your best chance to hitting the jackpot. But before we get into it, I have made millions building my businesses and investments over the last decade. However, I didn't just jump into creating those businesses by watching some side hustle videos online. So when I say wanna be rich, don't start a business, I'm honestly not trying to crush what is probably your main path to building your millions. What I want you to do is set yourself up for success by building the skill sets you need to succeed first before rushing into entrepreneurship blindly. So if you want to become rich, take a few minutes of your time to listen to these four steps because if I was in your position right now, I'd follow all these four steps from start to finish. Step one, learn to stack the deck in your favor. Oprah Winfrey said, passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. And to be honest, I love Oprah, but I hate these sorts of statements about follow your dreams or follow your passions because they come across as incomplete maps to success because they are. No one wants to live their life, live their dream, relaxing on a beach, but at the same time, not being able to afford food and water or shelter. That's not a beach any of us want to be on. I have a passion for eating chocolate and watching Netflix all day, but that passion hasn't helped me build my businesses. Not all your passions are going to help you make money or worse. You might find you don't even know what your passion is yet, and that's okay. Or maybe your passions are only possible with money. For instance, my passion is buying and redeveloping my own property into luxury accommodation. I really enjoy it. But as soon as I realized I needed money to get that started, I realized I needed to pivot to do something else that could make me money. I could have wasted time trying to achieve the impossible, but instead decided to park that passion aside and focus on making enough money to then invest in my passion later in life. Now, I have a multi-million pound property portfolio doing what I love. I knew to be truly happy later in life, I needed to sacrifice work-life balance and delay my passions to fix the money issue up front. I'm sure you probably already know this, but not having enough money for your basic day-to-day -day expenses can lead to so many more problems and ultimately negatively impact your mental health down the road. However, you can fix the money problem as I've done. I promise the road to building wealth is not an easy road. Otherwise, everyone would be doing it. But I promise you, you can do it. You just need to start by learning to stack the deck in your favor. You need to be honest with yourself about what are you actually good at. Usain Bolt was never going to be a world champion long distance runner and Tom Brady was never going to win Super Bowls playing defense. I spent university in my early career figuring out what I was good at and realized I was always performing better in sales and marketing modules and roles that I did, then on roles that I did in administration or accountancy. And so I leaned towards my strengths, setting my sights to work in more sales focused roles to build my skill sets further. I found the more work I did selling services face to face or over the phone, the more successful I became and the more money I made. Have a think about and list down the things you're good at. And if you find there are things that link together, then make sure you focus your time in improving those skills, as those skills are probably what will make you the most money down the line. You will probably find it easier to grow enjoyment for things you can get better and better at easily than trying to get better at things you're not naturally very good at. Your focus should be to use these skills to solve your money problems before looking to expand your skills in other areas. It is far, far easier to get better at something you're not good at 
when you've got the money already to invest in improving those skills. I didn't get better at golf until I started paying to have lessons. Step two, hustle for someone else. Now, I know you're sat there wanting to learn how to make yourself rich, not spending your time making someone else rich. And everyone wants to be the next Andrew Tate. And I completely understand the appeal of wanting to get through the day job, doing the bare minimum so that you can focus as much time as possible on your latest side hustle. That side hustle that is going to make you millions. But I promise you, doing the bare minimum in your day job is like going to the gym and not pushing hard. And doing that is something that should never be tolerated by you. All you are doing is creating bad habits and setting up your mindset for failure. This quote makes my point for me. Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. It is the way you do the little things that leads to how you do the big things in life. Anything you do for someone else, imagine you're at the gym training. Everything you end up achieving for yourself is you at the competition winning that gold medal. The two are connected. When I got my first graduate job working in sales, I spent every day at the office from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Even when I had days, I really didn't feel like it because I knew if I wanted to learn to get ahead in life, I needed to put in the grind. All I got was five to 10% commission on every pound of sales I made. And I made over a million in sales in less than a year. My boss, the owner, was making 20% after his costs off me, but I knew by learning to make him rich, I was learning to make myself rich and building good habits and a strong mindset along the way. It allowed me to build great skills around sales, marketing, customer service, and managing teams that then helped me build my first business. Hustling for someone else was me pumping iron at the gym, getting ready for game day. It was me working to learn, not to earn. When you're looking for a job, or if you're in your current job, your priority should be to work for types of companies you want to one day build or work for people you admire so you can learn and further develop the skill sets needed to be successful and learn how those companies work. Try and figure out how things work and connect together. Notice things that work well and make note of it, but also notice things that don't work well and make note of those as well. That will come in handy when game day comes and you're ready to start your first business or side hustle. To this day, I still remember the things my boss did badly as examples of what not to do now. Step three, network and reputation is everything. Warren Buffett, the billionaire investor said it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. And I, I couldn't agree more with him, to be honest. And when you pair reputation with your network, the two go hand in hand. Your network is your net worth. And you're not gonna have a good network of friends if you don't have a good reputation of being reliable and dependable. You're also not going to be able to connect with new people to grow your network if they don't think you have a good image or reputation. Any relationship has to work for both parties. You have to bring something to the table if you're gonna be able to connect to someone that brings something to you. Your reputation starts with how you take care of your image. You'll never get a second chance to make a great first impression, as the saying goes. And of course, now with social media, people can make a first impression of you with you having ever met them. Princeton psychologists ran a series of experiments and found it was undeniable that it takes about a tenth of a second for people to form an impression of a stranger. Like it or not, judgments made in those initial seconds play a powerful role in how we treat others and how we get treated by others. Psychologists have long known that attractive people get better outcomes in practically all walks of life, that taller people for both men and women are more likely to earn more, a one inch increase in height is associated on average with a 1.4 to 2.9% increase in weekly earnings, believe it or not. Now, I'm not here to judge if you're tall, short, fat, 
ugly, but taking care of your appearance in a way that is more likely to project confidence and attractiveness is going to help you build your network and reputation. In reality, the skills and knowledge you learn from hustling for someone else and the image and network you build are your weapons to entering the ring trained. Step four, enter the ring trained. You're mad to enter the boxing ring without having trained. Do you honestly think Andrew Tate would have become a four-time world champion in kickboxing without training? If you followed my first three steps, you would have invested your time to build yourself into a lean machine ready to take on your first side hustle. I set up my first business because as I built my skill sets, as I understood how business works and made my boss hundreds of grand in the process, I started to realize more and more how much of a complete idiot he was and how I could do it better. And I'm not alone. A lot of people that go into business for themselves do it because they think they can do a better job than the company or the person they've worked for. Setting up a business can be really scary, even if you're prepared. No one wants to put loads of time and money into a business for it to then fail. But that is what happens most of the time. 60% of businesses fail in the first three years. And the best way for you to avoid this is to start by setting up a side hustle. This allows you to test ideas with minimal risk. You can keep testing ideas until you hit the jackpot and build it into a proper business. With my business, I set up a website and in my spare time was trying to generate leads for a service I couldn't actually yet deliver. What it did was it helped me test there was a demand for my service and develop the confidence that I could find the customers to sell to. That then gave me the confidence to quit my job and focus on it full time. 11 years later, that same business is still going from strength to strength. A friend of mine did a similar thing about the same time, except with ice cream. He created a recipe for a new healthy ice cream. He hadn't been able to get it mass produced as he couldn't afford to take any risks to do that. Um, but he still managed to get orders from Waitrose to stock his product before he'd even figured out how he could even pay to mass produce his ice cream. Now his ice cream is stocked in supermarkets across Europe. You probably had it. Using the strategy of testing side hustles in a low cost way allows you to test so many different ideas risk free. Only once you know you have customers do you then go all in to deliver your product or service. When you're testing how side hustles work, make sure you're measuring and testing the right things. There's a reason why if you're watching a sport, you'll see how all those teams and athletes um, are having their stats being tracked and measured by their teams. You get what you measure and you can only improve what you measure at the end of the day. There's no point finding out you can get customers to buy your product at $10 or £10 when it costs you $15 or pounds to provide it to them. When you land a product or service that makes you money, you wanna continue trying to improve or expand your product or service to grow more and more customers to make more and more money. And the easiest way to do that is to ask them what you think, is to ask them what they think. After every completed sale in my estate agency business, my team will call our customers at the end of the process to take them through a questionnaire of their experience with us. That feedback helps us make improvements to our service every week and also helps us pick up on anything we might have gone wrong to put it right. Running a business is always about solving problems and no matter how successful you get or your business gets, you'll always have problems to solve. The more you problem solve, the more you will realize the 80-20 rule. The 80% of your results, business or profits will come from 20% of your effort. And this 80-20 uh, rule can apply to a lot of different things in life. For instance, 80% of stress can be caused by 20% of stresses, or 80% of sales can come from 20% of employees. As a business owner, your job will be to continue to optimize the 20% and cut out the 80% that is basically wasting yours and your business's time. In conclusion, if you want to be rich, yes, you should start a business. But before you accuse me of misleading you with the title of this video, give me 30 seconds to explain. I've seen time and time again, people jump to start a business, jump into that ring unprepared, 
only to be dealt a knockout blow. And for those that fail, it's really hard for them. But unfortunately, it is usually those same people that go on to discourage everyone else around them trying, spurting out statistics like 90% of businesses fail within five years. And although that is a true statistic, your goal should be to increase the chances of being in that successful 10%, not just cross your fingers, accept the statistic and hope for the best. Follow my advice in this video and your chances of succeeding starting a business are going to be dramatically higher than 10%. The majority of millionaires and billionaires out there didn't get that way by working for someone else. They did it by creating businesses that offered value to loads of customers out there. If you'd like more inspiration on how to make money, you can watch this video as the YouTube algorithm seems to predict that you'll like it, but don't click on it just yet. Make sure you subscribe if you want to grow wealth. I'll see you over here.